You're so thank you, Alexi, for introduction. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to second day of PG Confu. Uh, and you know, uh, early morning talking about Postgres. You know, it's a sort of a DBA romantic. We usually do upgrades pretty much sleepy in the morning or in the night or something like this. So this time slot passed to this uh, topic quite well. Uh, anyway, let's uh, go to the details. So I'm working for Data Agrid, uh, and that's one of the reasons I do this talk, because uh, as a part of our professional services, we do a lot of upgrades for our customers, and we accumulate certain list of um, good practices, bad practices, ugly practices, and funny stories. Uh, so uh, if you need assistance, uh, you know where to find us. We also have a booth. Uh, and let's go to the PG upgrades. So why we stall? Uh, first of all, in theory, upgrading a Postgres code installation is not a rocket science. It's a relatively easy routine procedure. But there are lots of small details which can be a big risk for your database installation. Uh, and um, with unsuccessful upgrades, your data would be ruined, you would get downtime. Uh, and um, most of all, upgrade um, requires good knowledge of your system, of your uh, application, good communication with other teams, uh, and practice. Uh, and because of that, uh, upgrading is not that easy as it looks like. Uh, because of those problems, DBA do not like upgrades. Uh, anyone? Uh, do you like to upgrade your database? Who is scared to upgrade the database? Oh, surprisingly, a surprising amount of people. Uh, and um, it's obvious, um, but we need to upgrade because um, running outdated versions is not a good idea. Don't be attached to outdated versions. Uh, and your developers would be not happy because they want new features and so on. Uh, but because of a dislike of upgrades, many DBA just um, lose the practice. You know, it's the same phenomena like with uh, uh, doctors. Uh, the doctors, uh, the surgeons who make certain operations frequently, they are more skilled on those things. So if you upgrade frequently, it improves your skills. And then you would be more safer with one and each upgrade. Uh, why you need to upgrade? Obviously, bug fixes, security fixes. Uh, Postgres recently keep a uh, tremendous tempo of bringing new features, improving performance, and so on. So if you're running Postgres Scale 13, most likely your performance is not optimal uh, comparing to what you would get from 16 or 17. Uh, and uh, regular upgrades make it easier because if you try to jump over certain uh, versions, it um, could be tricky. Uh, and uh, besides of that, uh, if you run very old unsupported version of PostgreSQL, which currently is version 12 next year, version 15 would be out of support. Uh, well, you make people like me or uh, his uh, cyber maestad Hans-Jürgen Schönig very happy about this. Uh, so don't run old versions. Uh, before version 10, the version numbering was like this. So there was merger, a major version from two figures and then one minor. Uh, after version 10, it was streamlined. And now versions are just from two digits, major and minor. Uh, just uh, to sync on terminology. And because of those version numbering, we have two types of upgrades. Minor upgrades, which are relatively easy to do, uh, and major upgrades, which are most complicated. Uh, the key to this uh, division is that uh, no new features are actually um, committed to the minor upgrade, to minor version. Minor version is usually bug fixes and um, some hotfixes uh, and so on. It doesn't bring new functionality. So with uh, one minor version bina binary, you can run database uh, which was previously run with a different minor version. Uh, so, but 
in major version that could come to significant changes uh, and that's why two uh, major versions could not run on the same database uh, two major versions of binaries and you need to perform an upgrade because of new features developers bring into the major version uh, sometimes there are special requirements so some we would talk about it uh, in more details but you can have specific extensions uh, you can have requirements on uh, downtime and you can uh, have requirements uh, on many different things for example you can not have enabled checksums uh, your operating system uh, could change uh, the way how it deals with uh, locales and collations uh, and so on and so on uh, before any upgrade uh, there is an easy checklist which you need to follow first of all carefully read version specific release notes if you jump over several versions you need to read them all and that makes also the upgrade procedure very complicated uh, and if you for example uh, use different extensions you also need to uh, figure out if this extension uh, is compatible with this upgrade uh, there used to be issues about this like for example with PostJS certain versions require special treatments before you make an upgrade so every part of PostgreSQL ecosystem you uh, you are using please read release notes regarding to this release it's the first step uh, definitely play with an upgrade then you choose a method how you upgrade play in the test environment because if uh you have some issues probably not all of them but some of them you can catch in the test environment it's usually a good practice especially if you use a lot of extensions or you plan to do a tricky upgrade like with logical replication uh, it's a must to play enough in test environment uh, and on the soft skill side uh, align with your application developers team uh, because uh, they need to cooperate with you during the upgrade process uh, they knew what features they are using uh, they can cut or reduce the traffic on particular database instance during upgrades if you decide to go with them to do an upgrade with uh, such a method uh, so uh, the last thing which is very important make a backup and test that you can recover from this backup with a test recovery because test recovery is the only way how to say okay we can recover from this particular backup uh, upgrading things with risky methods is not good idea without a proper backup uh, minus upgrade are easy so you simply install new binaries uh, and run them on the old database directory uh, and that's totally okay so um, uh, one thing which could go wrong in this regard is uh, if you try to do uh, with minimizing of downtime uh, you can forget to make a checkpoint before uh, shutting postgres call down and postgres would shut down very slowly and your users would experience longer downtime so before you do this perform a checkpoint uh, because this hang on stopping database server is because postgres starts to do checkpoint and stops accept new connections and drops the old connections in the same time uh, but the thing which you need to check is that you carefully upgraded all the postgres awaited packages you are using because if you just upgrade the server uh, it and forget to upgrade the client it's probably okay but if you forget to upgrade postgres for example it could be tricky uh, so um, with major upgrades it's more complicated you need to install all the new versions of all postgresql related packages you need to read carefully as i told release notes uh, you know you need to know your postgres uh, installation you need to be familiar in which directories you are installing things and so on especially if you do not use uh, operating system uh, way of putting files in different places especially if you're using symlinks for different table spaces so extensive documentation and my advice what we do with our customers usually we always write a md file with a plan how we upgrade with all details and we peer review this thing and that reduces the amount uh, of uh, mistakes since we started to use this practice so plan carefully uh, then you 
uh, read documentation for um, your upgrade method. For example, if you're upgrading with PG upgrade, um, it generally advised to use documentation uh, of PG upgrade for the version to which you upgrade. So PG upgrade is a tricky thing. So uh, then developers uh, do a new version. PG upgrade is usually tweaked to deal with new features and so on. So carefully read documentation on PG upgrade from the version to which you upgrade. Uh, align with application development team and again, do a backup. While checking uh, what packages you have and which of them are Postgres related, uh, it's important to uh, check exactly which packages you are using, but also keep in mind some packages do not have Postgres in the name. For example, PG Balancer is PG Balancer, so uh, figure out a list of keywords which you need to check. Uh, check against uh, PG Balancer, PG Digi, K Ring, or things like this. Um, there are three families of ma major upgrade methods uh, good old dump restore, PG upgrade, and methods based on replication. Uh, there are several of them, but today uh, the best one and most bulletproof, uh, if I can apply that term to uh, upgrades and to logical replication, is the logical replication. Uh, major upgrade using PG dump. It's probably the easiest way if you can afford it, because PG dump uh, could be slow if you have a large database. Uh, PG dump requires a double disk space. Uh, PG dump uh, requires downtime if your PG dump is long enough. So if you have a large database, PG dump is slow. Basically, you need to switch all the traffic off, and that would be your downtime. Uh, but there are good news as well. Uh, PG dump works with one and every Postgres since version 7. Uh, sometimes you need, of course, to go from one version to another and the next step to another if you jump several versions. But generally, PG dump uh, is a very well proven tool. Uh, you can use custom format with uh, compression, with several jobs to speed up the thing. Uh, and well, if your installation allows you to use PG dump, lucky you are. You can do this and you would be um, quite satisfied with that. Uh, and you do not need to use risky methods like PG upgrade or complicated methods like um, logical replication. Uh, sometimes you even can do PG dump all and immediately restore to the server on a different port and then switch to one another. It it works. If it works, it works. So don't forget about PG dump. Then you consider choosing different options for your PG upgrade. Uh, major upgrade with PG dump looks like this: you install the new binaries, you initialize fully new uh, cluster. Uh, don't forget to use the same locale you use for the old cluster. Uh, don't uh, forget about configuration files because there are lots of things which could be problematic. Keep in mind that configuration files change uh, could, could be changed from one version to another. So just it's simply diff, regretfully doesn't work. You need to figure out what new features, new parameter names, some parameters names could be, uh, some parameters could be dropped or renamed. You need to figure out uh, how to change that appropriately uh, during the preparation phase. Uh, and um, it's generally a good idea to use the newer version of PG dump, uh, but uh, since uh, version 10, um, almost every PG dump could be used for, for an upgrade. Uh, then you restore the dump and try to figure out that everything is good. And then you switch application to a new cluster. Everything is okay. Uh, generally, after performing an upgrade, we spent uh, from 15 minutes to a couple of hours uh, parsing logs for errors, for warnings, and compare that to what we saw before an upgrade because we can forget something. Uh, we can um, 
um, see some errors and we can fix them because someone can not connect, for example, because we forget something in BGHBACON for something like this. Uh, so generally, after you prompt upgrade, uh, it's uh, too early to open your beer and relax. You need to, to check uh, everything after an upgrade. Uh, so, while you're installing new binaries, uh, know your operating system, because, for example, Debian uh, starts to uh, create and start the new cluster. Most likely, with a great procedure, you want to create the cluster yourself. So, there is a configuration file which um, allows to uh, change this behavior, and Postgres would not uh, create a new cluster and start it. You can create it manually uh, yourself. So PG upgrade, how it works, uh, the procedure, simple case, uh, more complicated cases, how to minimize downtime and uh, how to uh, not forget about um, some painful details. So the idea is very easy. Uh, then we have a major version. Uh, the data files we have uh, most likely do not change. Uh, there is work in progress on uh, transparent uh, data encryption, for example, that could potentially change the structure of uh, blocks, but uh, structure of pages of a blocks of data in Postgres uh, is very conservative. It didn't change for many, many years. Uh, that's why PG upgrade is possible. So only PG catalog uh, and PG exact, uh, um, only PG catalog is changed. So we decouple um, active uh, PG exact uh, and uh, put the new PG catalog on the same data files and switch PG exact during PG upgrade. That's how it works. And that's how uh, PG upgrade can work in two major regimes. So it can copy the user data to a new cluster, which is slow and not that efficient, or it can uh, use hard links to relink this data, uh, which is almost instantaneous, so it's very fast, but it's also dangerous because if something goes wrong, uh, you do not have an old cluster. You do this relink and you cannot basically um, uh, do the entire stake from a minced meat so it's already minced so your database is uh is not working if something goes wrong so preparations uh check for replication slots uh, replication slot is a nice concept postgres has uh and if you um have logical replication things like this most likely good practice is to drop them and recreate them after upgrade so if you have uh analytical uh, data streaming, if you have CDC, Debezium, Flink, or whatever, talk to your data analytics team pre while preparing to uh, to upgrade, because then after you finish your upgrade, they need to resync the things uh, after you recreate the replication slots. And you can, uh, and you must also uh, keep track on those replication slots, how many of them do you have, and so on. Uh, read release notes, uh, PG upgrade documentation, uh, especially the uh, section about incompatibilities, and uh, check all your extensions. Uh, discuss procedure with your developer team, plan a window, uh, plan a backup uh, solution, what you're supposed to do if everything goes wrong, make an extra backup. Also, a good idea is just to do a PG dump all. Uh, the schema, uh, just to be safe that everything uh, you need, you have. So the procedure, you create an empty database of new version of PostgreSQL. Uh, you try run PG upgrade with the option check. Uh, and uh, against certain issues, uh, check can save you. So for example, if the versions are wrong, configuration files are totally different. Uh, PG upgrade during dry run would say that clusters are incompatible. One of the issues which you can catch like this if your old cluster has no checksums enabled uh, and your new cluster has checksums enabled. With next major upgrade, oh, well, the major upgrade after the next uh, to the version 18, that could be an issue for all of you if you do not have checksums enabled. 
because it would be a default in future and um, uh, it it is necessary to uh, to deal with checksums. How to deal with checksums would, would be a separate slide a bit later. Then you stop database with old version and now you need to act quickly. You start upgrade procedure with PG upgrade and start after that the database uh, that runs a new version. Uh, relatively easy, you can do that re relatively fast if you use hard links, for example. Uh, but the key thing to achieve the lowest downtime is uh, good preparation. Um, then after the upgrade, you start. Uh, you need to start to collect statistic because PG upgrade so far doesn't transfer optimizer statistics and immediately after upgrade, before Postgres collects all the statistics, you will have troubles with that. Uh, your plans would be ruined uh, and uh, you need to collect statistics anyway. Uh, then statistic collection started, you can open your database for your applications. If you have large database with uh, intensive workload, you probably want to collect some initial statistics and after that open your database. If your database is relatively slow, sometimes you can, um, uh, if your database is not very big, sometimes you can uh, run entire statistic collection and then open it. Uh, it's on you to decide uh, how to do that properly. But generally, a um, uh, good idea to figure out how, what is the best way to collect the statistics. I think it's a question there. Yeah. Uh, there would be a slide about this. <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, depending uh, on your database, on specific of your workload, um, you can achieve relatively low downtime with PG upgrade. So that's an example of PG upgrade check. Uh, you use like PG upgrade with configuration parameters uh, um, like this, and then you run the check, and then you get this uh, thing. Clusters are compatible. That means you most likely can perform upgrades relatively good. So minimizing downtime. One of the ways how you can use uh, PG upgrade with hard links uh, is to run PG upgrade for a database which is behind PG Bouncer. PG Bouncer has a nice feature which uh, called pause resume. So one of the things you are doing with that, um, you ask your uh, developer team to reduce writing traffic, so modification of things, uh, and uh, they cannot care about the read traffic. So you do not have entirely downtime, you have some service degradation, which is sometimes more acceptable than a downtime. Uh, then you pause the connections. Before that, you issue a checkpoint to stop Postgres relatively fast. Uh, and um, then you pause PG Bouncer. That means the reading clients do not drop the sessions, they start to wait. And while you doing the PG upgrade with minus minus link, uh, which could last for seconds or even faster, uh, and then you start the database, uh, those clients could wait. And for them, that would be not a drop of connection, but slightly more waiting time. Uh, sometimes you can achieve really low downtime with PG upgrade using this method. Uh, the problem is you always need to have a plan B. That's why with such major upgrade, we usually start with primary database to upgrade. And if something goes wrong at this stage, uh, we switch over to replica or rather failover in this case, uh, and uh, repeat the procedure later after we figure out why we actually uh, run in trouble. So plan B is always very necessary. Uh, PG upgrade of hot standby replica. So first, as I told, you upgrade primary as a standalone server. Uh, you keep the replica intact to fail over to it. Uh, and then if you open your primary, it works, you check everything is okay. You simply reinstantiate new replica from the primary uh, and let the replica keep up with the primary. Uh, the procedure is you can uh, pause PG Bouncer, 
uh, on standby, then clone replica, start replica with new binaries, resume PG bounds or connections, uh, and everything supposed to work. There are details with PG upgrade which could be tricky, as I told, and uh, several slides would be specifically dedicated uh, to those tricky things. So first of all, before version 18, Postgres uh, did not transfer the statistics from the old cluster. And it was the major pain point for many people with large database installations. Uh, so this part is still actual before uh, the version 18. So after Postgre uh, Postgres performed PG upgrade, you need to run vacuum DB uh, minus all minus minus analyzing stages. Um, that is uh, the default behavior, then it would show you stages and then um, you achieve like first 10 stages, you probably can open your database if you have very intensive workload. Of course, if your workload is not very intensive, you can open database immediately and probably uh, users would be still satisfied. Uh, what we sometimes do with uh, very uh, heavy loaded databases, we do vacuum DB minus minus O and do the analyze only. Uh, so to have some rough statistics, um, but it depends on your database. So after one or two upgrades, you would probably figure out what um, uh, what is the best way for your database and after that version 18 would be there so everything would be okay um, you can run Wacom DB in parallel it's generally good practice if your database is large and you need to achieve a minimal time for Wacom DB but keep in mind that Wacom DB counts against um, processors uh, in your database and if in parallel with Wacom DB you open your connections uh, be careful not not to hit uh, out of memory queue. Uh, always calculate how many parallel processes in Postgres you can afford. Uh, documentation suggests. Uh, I hope uh, it would be changed or already changed in recent versions. But there are still versions uh, which are on the community support which recommend this. They recommend rsync to reinstantiate uh, in in use standby. Uh, my suggestion, uh, if uh, it works for you to reinstantiate a new standby with PG base backup, use PG base backup because rsync uh, is basically manual scripting uh, of uh, the backup. It's usually a good way to shoot yourself in the leg. So don't do this. Uh, use PG base backup to reinstantiate your replica. If your database is large, workload intensive, Probably you should consider to use PG Backrest uh, as your major uh, backup solution and then use PG Backrest to recentate your replicate would be faster uh, in many cases. Another detail, uh, Debian and Ubuntu, which are common operating system for Postgres because the repository is well maintained by community, thanks Evrim and um, Christoph. Uh, and, um, Many people use it for uh, running Postgres. Uh, Debian has its own way to use PG upgrade cluster, uh, and uh, generally it works, but uh, I saw the cases then it actually ruined the database um, because um, some bugs in it. Uh, I don't think many people use it actually every day. Uh, that's why by big upgrades, my preference is to do everything manually with proper control, not to use those rubbers, uh, and it's safer. Uh, also, that part is tricky because it converts PostgreSQL conf uh, for you automatically, and I'm not pretty much sure it's so well maintained that it really knows about all the changes and the parameters from version to version. Another part of details, extension can surprise you. Uh, PG Upgrade keeps old versions of extensions. Uh, and the good idea is just to go through all your extensions, use PG, uh, PSQL to figure out that list, and say extension name update. Uh, you need to know your extensions which you use. For example, some extensions uh, this ecosystem is better, better, and better over the years, but uh, some extensions could not have proper upgrade scripts, some extensions could have issues. So, um, first of all, always do this update, 
but uh, know your extensions, check how to upgrade your extensions because it could be tricky. Even some very prominent extensions, like for example, TimescaleDB DB in the early days of uh, this extension had issues with upgrades. Uh, if extension is complex, it could be an issue. Um, Post.js is a very specific thing. Uh, you always need to check release notes for Post.js and uh, compatibility issues about upgrade. But good thing, Post.js is very well documented thing. So you will find the information about this. Checksums, it's the separate thing. Uh, checksums uh, uh, were long time not default. Uh, it would be default in version 18, I think, uh, as well. Um, but if you run your database through the cycle of PG upgrades uh, with Relink and so on, uh, basically your database is the same you initialized in version 10 or 11. So no checksums because it's always a physical copy. Checksums could protect every block of your database from certain types of corruption. And in general, it's a very good idea to use them overall. So um, what is the way, and uh, of course, then you would upgrade to version 18, you would need to deal with checksums even if you do not enable them before, uh, because uh, a new cluster would have them and you would need to figure out how to enable them. Uh, one of um, uh, the problems with PG checksums is that this utility enables checksums in entire cluster, but it's a flying procedure. You need to switch your uh, cluster off uh, and offline run this thing, and this thing is not instantaneous. So if you have a large database, it takes some time. It could be an hour, it could be two hours, or something like this. Because we recently moved all of, all of our customers uh, finally to mandatory checksums and we advise new customers to use that as well uh we figured out that the best way to uh, do that during the pg upgrade could be tricky but could save a lot of efforts and time uh, so what we do uh, we usually prepare one of the physical replicas uh, to enable checksum so it's easy sometimes to take a read-only replica offline, enable checksum, and then replication can work with one cluster without checksums and one cluster, uh, and one part of the cluster with checksums. So we do that offline on the replica, then let replica keep up. Uh, and while we're preparing the upgrade, what we do, we uh, switch both nodes. Uh, we do a quick, um, promote of the replica and upgrade with uh, hard links if everything goes right uh, we use it as a new primary we let the application work with this and we reinstantiate um, uh, the thing which was previously a primary as a new replica so we do combined pg upgrades and controlled switchover uh, and that allows us to have a new cluster already with checksums uh, it could be tricky, it requires more planning, but it's a way how to do that, uh, because generally uh, then PG upgrade fails uh, this part with the links. Most uh, cases which I saw, uh, it was uh, data corruption. So if your checksums are not enabled, uh, if you do not use PG arm check regularly on your indexes, for example, it could be the cause of, of the problems with PG upgrade. So it's a good idea to have at least checksums enabled. Uh, there is some work in progress, as uh, uh, Corey told us uh, just at the beginning of this talk. Uh, so many people were complaining to hackers uh, in 2023 in Ottawa that PG upgrade is not that straightforward as uh, it's supposed to be, because on the large databases, a statistic collection could be very crazy problem, which takes a very long time. Uh, and since that time, many people uh, contributed to that patch, and now uh, at least some statistics could be transferred from old cluster to the new one. Uh, and I personally am very excited about this and waiting when I can try this and uh, share with you the knowledge how it works. Um, but it's definitely a great progress. You can follow this progress uh, in uh, this thread on hackers, uh, and I would upload the slides. You can use this link as an active link and uh, take a look on that uh, discussion. Uh, 
some nodes of uh, PG backrest, if you use uh, PG backrest uh, as your default uh, backup restore solution, uh, and I strongly recommend you to consider this option because it's good. Uh, you need, first of all, check version compatibility, uh, if it's compatible with uh, your uh, Postgres and so on. Uh, and right after upgrade, uh, you need to change the path in pgbackrest.conf because it points to the old cluster. You need to uh, go through and uh, increment the number of version accordingly uh, to let it uh, point to the proper uh, database uh, uh, directory. And after that, you need to do the stanza upgrade for pgbackrest. Stanza is a sort of a catalog which pgbackrest use. And after upgrade, you need to tell that you just did an upgrade. My suggestion also is right after upgrade, just do a new full backup of your database if you can afford that or do that next night or next technological window, which you maintenance window, which you would use um, just to make sure that your backup procedure is non-interrupted and you still have proper backups and so on. Um, using replication to upgrade PostgreSQL. So streaming replication doesn't uh, allow you to uh, stream the walls between different versions. So it's not an option. Some replication methods can do that. First of all, it's logical replication. Uh, it's Sloney. Still in 2024, if you're uh, crazy enough, you can use Sloney and it works. Uh, it's uh, It requires lots of disk space, uh, as you, usually with replication methods, you probably don't want to use Sloney if you did not do done this before. I don't know if Lambda's project is not dead. Uh, anecdotally, a couple of years ago, I see people who use that, and uh, theoretically, you can use it for a replication upgrade. But uh, generally, all the replication thing looks similar. You set up new database cluster, you set up replication between the versions, and you perform failover. And then you have a new database, and then you can do your new replica with a physical uh, backup and run the new replica. Uh, if it would be that easy, nobody would use dangerous PG upgrade. But it's not that easy because logical replication uh, author is desired method for many people because it promises zero downtime. It actually can be very tricky it depends on your schema design because for proper functioning of logical replication um, you need to have a primary key on uh, each table and uh, you need to have uh, i would say predictable ci cd uh, in terms of dml uh, and ddl because if you have a lot of developers constantly delivering new features they can ruin your upgrade procedure with a single uh, is a, a, a single uh, commit uh, which would be deployed uh, into your application with some, I don't know, adding new column or new data type or whatever. Uh, logical replication is very vulnerable to such things. So generally, if um, even if you have predictable application which which is good, you can consider logical replication as an upgrade. Generally, it's good practice to stop the writing traffic uh, in this time, which would efficiently cause uh, service degradation the same way is with PG upgrade. So uh, always choosing between logical replication and PG upgrade um, compare the risk, because sometimes risky PG upgrade could be uh, same promising as PG upgrades. It could be also risky and also could cause the downtime. Uh, sometimes if you just want to use uh, logical replication without proper preparation, without knowing your database, it would be actually more harmful. It can cause more uh, service degradation than PG upgrade. So sort of a conclusion by the one of the final slides. Uh, dump restore. Uh, downtime is high, uh, extra disk space, complexity is low, but low risk as well. So if you want uh, to do an upgrade, check if you can do that with PG dump. If you can, you are happy. PG upgrade with copy, uh, almost the same thing as PG dump. 
slightly more complex. So PG upgrade with copy is really rare use case for us, for example, because we can do the thing with PG upgrade or PG dump. Uh, and we choose PG upgrade, then we really need to upgrade a large database, and that's why we need to uh, take a risk and use hard links. Logical replication, downtime is low, disk space is double, complexity is sometimes very high, risks are low, but they could be also not that low, so it's difficult to say. Sloney and Londice, I would not consider a good replication tools uh, for 2024, and just keep them here for historical reasons. Uh, in these slides, which I would upload, as I told, uh, is some reading list on PG upgrade, which is quite useful. Uh, I don't know, uh, as I checked a couple of months ago, this redirect to second quadrant block was still working. I don't know, uh, EDB could change that every time, so uh, you can just Google by the name of this uh, blog post or find that in the caches. So that's it from my side today. Uh, and we have almost 10 minutes for questions, or 8, or something like this. Thank you very much. If you have questions, please raise your hand, and we will come to you with a mic. Thank you for the talk. Uh, the question is about minor version upgrades, and when you're doing it with RPM packages, uh, do you support the method where you upgrade the binaries whilst the database is running and then stop and start the database as a very fast way to upgrade? Or do you suggest stop the database, upgrade the binaries, and then start the database? Uh, like we do, usually we um, use the replica to start such an upgrade. Uh, and we do the simple thing. We install all the binaries, uh, and then we stop the old one, start the new one. Okay, fine. So, so you're 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 quite happy to have the old uh, the old database yeah. running while you change the binaries. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, th then we remove the old binaries after everything is done because to have an old binaries is generally bad practice. Someone can mess up and uh, yeah. Thank you for the talk. Um, I haven't done any upgrades since we upgraded to version 12, so mm. I have a, a task to do when I get home. Mm. Uh, when you do the PP, I think we used uh, PD jump restore last time and it went, it was uh, tough, but it worked. Um, when you do PD up upgrade, do you need to have the binaries of both the old version and the new version, or could you uh, stop stop the old version, take a snapshot, do the upgrade on, on the new snapshot with the new binaries? Well, generally, if uh, if you ha for what purpose do you want to have the snapshot? Just to be safe that you can fall back. Uh, if size of your database is uh, okay for proper snapshot of virtual machine, you definitely can uh, do the easy thing. You can stop everything, do a snapshot, start everything, and then prepare an upgrade, for example. Uh, it's not a big deal. But during the PG upgrade, you need both binaries, the old and new. That's how it works, because it needs both binaries and both uh, data years uh, to start an upgrade. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, uh, you talk about PG upgrade, but you don't mention the snapshot option. That quite be interesting also. There is a specific reason for that? Uh, well, uh, snapshots could be tricky. Uh, generally, uh, you can use snapshot for backup purposes and then with upgrade as well, uh, if you know quite well what you're doing. And that's not the easy thing. Actually, in PostgreSQL documentation, everything is there. So uh, if you follow it, you can do it properly. But uh, I saw many times when people do snapshot from which they cannot recover at all. That's why I just do not cover those more tricky methods in this talk. Uh, if you do the snapshots, if, for example, if you use it for regular backups, 
and you know how to do proper log archiving to uh, keep your restored database in proper consistent state, you probably can do that. Um, but uh, you need to test that very explicitly because then we make our customers just like, okay, you're using snapshot, just do test recoveries regularly. And then they see that the quote of the restoring is 20%, they start to think about this. Yeah. So uh, you can do this, but it's tricky. Thank you. Thank thanks. Uh, what's your uh, opinion about uh, BG copy DB? PG copy DB. I'm not sure I've ever used this. <laughs> I, I learned about it two days ago during training, and I, I used it, and it's amazing to just clone a database, but also follow with uh, logical replication uh, the new database and uh, uh, um, shift over. So I, I need certainly to take a look on that and figure out if it works. Uh, but generally, you know, upgrading Postgres, uh, you always, uh, once a month, at least you learn something new, even if you do that every day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the tip. Uh, I, uh, I'll, so if you enable the checksums, uh, I saw that you marked the PG upgrade with the link option as being very risky. Will enabling the checksums do anything to lower that risk? I don't think so. Uh, the problem is a uh, pizza upgrade won't work if the structure of uh, uh, clusters is uh, different and checksums are considered to be a different structure of, of the uh, catalog. So uh, other option could be that you install the new version with uh, checksums enabled by default and switch them off there and do an upgrade and then later enable them. But uh, my method is just about uh, minimizing the downtime. So you can go both ways, but generally because checksums are ultimately beneficial, my suggestion is to enable checksums on the old cluster and then do an upgrade. More questions? Ah, yes. Hello, thanks for the great uh, talk. So about the uh, logical replication, you mentioned that the main issue is that uh, schema changes are not replicated and that you have to use uh, primary key or unique indexes in, in both sides. Yep. Are these the only issues or? Uh, well, um, custom types. Uh, all, all the issues of the logical replication which are known uh, could uh, harm this method. So generally, um, Logical replication is not that easy. Yeah. Okay, I have a question myself. Yeah. Um, the question concerns the behavior of applications when a database gets upgraded over multiple major versions. For yeah. example, version 15 changed the permissions in the public schema, uh, which presents a problem to quite a few applications and I witness many upgrades even per week, if not per day. Uh, and yeah, so version 15 created some problems for the application. Um, can you name more examples like this that people should be aware of? I, I would say uh, one of the problems is that logical replication is a great mechanism and it's under very intensive development. So each version since it was introduced, it brings new functionality. So 17 allows you to use logical replication from Replica, for example, and so on. Uh, and generally, I do not advise because of that to jump over the versions with logical replication because it's increased complexity uh, very high. Um, um, I don't know, uh, this, your, your example is very good actually, uh, but also I think, um, I would not consider to upgrade uh, with logical replication from earlier versions like like, like 13, 12 to something modern. Uh, it's relatively safe to do that, for example, between 15 and 16 or between 16 and 17, probably. I do not have enough statistics on such upgrades between 15 and 16, but uh, it's more tricky. Yeah. I think in my experience, 15 to 16 works without major issues, yeah. but we are not the biggest users of logical replication, of the standard logical replication. Yeah, well, uh, uh, 
it's, it's always why, why I don't like uh, logical replication to do the upgrades. Uh, uh, you need to check many things, and it's very unpredictable. With PG upgrade, if you carefully read documentation, it's predictable. <laughs> In logical replication, you can always find something new. Thank you. I think we are at the end of the time allocated for this talk. Thank you very much, Ilya. Thank you. Stock will be in the same room in 10 minutes.